But tonight I want to talk about four things that will help you to have an effective prayer life. Four things that will help you to have an effective prayer life. There's nothing complex or complicated about this message. It's it's going to be simple. In Psalm 55 and verse 18, David said, Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. And so the first thing is really profound. It's deep. Set a definite time to pray. And David said, evening and morning and at noon. In other words, David had three definite times when he prayed each day. Evening, morning, and at noon. The Jewish day was not like ours. Our day begins in the morning. Theirs begins at sunset. The Jewish day begins at sunset. And that's why the Sabbath, which is on Saturday, is actually observed beginning on Friday evening. Because the Jews start their day at sunset. When I was in Egypt, I went to Alexandria, I went to Cairo. Major metropolises. Cairo, 25 million people live in Cairo. There's no traffic during the day in Cairo. Not that, you know, people, you know, they ride around on camels in Cairo. Anyways, I'm joking about that. But the streets in Cairo, major six-lane highway going, you know, down the middle of Cairo. There are ditches. On either side, there's three lanes, and median, three lanes. And on either side, there's ditches, and the roads have a slope to them. But the purpose of those little ditches, you could be in a tour bus, you could be in a taxi cab, you could be in a Mercedes, be in a Ford, you could be in a Toyota, you could be riding a mule or an ox or a camel or an elephant. <laughs> It was designed so that the waste products, the pollution, if you will, the exhaust of the animals, the exhaust of the vehicles goes up in the air, the exhaust of the animals hits the road and it's supposed to flow down into these ditches and then the rainwater is supposed to send that into the Nile River. Of course, it hardly ever rains in Egypt. You're in the Sahara Desert. The roads stink. They really do. But there's hardly any traffic on the road in a city of 25 million people. Cairo is a ghost town during the day. Alexandria is a ghost town during the day. Now, I was there in December. I was dressed about like I am now. A pair of pants, you know, a short sleeve golf shirt, had a ball cap. The Egyptians were literally dressed in snowsuits and parkas. It was unbearably cold for them in December. It was 68 degrees outside. They couldn't handle that. But in the summertime, when it's 120 degrees in the shade, so their whole world exists at night because it's 120 degrees in the day, at nighttime, you know, it gets down to, you know, about 95 degrees, and that's bearable for them. That's, that's their comfort level. And so in Alexandria, in Cairo, after the sun has gone down, you see the things start to roll up, and the shops begin to open, and the traffic is heavy on the streets, and people are d- doing things. They're going to work. They're living their life. What you would think is normal for 2 o'clock in the afternoon here It's normal for 10, 11, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning there. Their day begins when most of us in this country are starting to go to bed. It was the same in in Jerusalem. It was the same in Israel. It's the same in a lot of those Middle Eastern desert cultures. And so when David says, evening, morning, and at noon will I pray, he's saying he starts his day with prayer. Evening. He starts his day with prayer. Morning. That's the middle of his day. And at noon, it's before he goes to bed. And so he starts his day with prayer. He has prayer at midday, and prayer is the last thing he does before he goes to bed at the end of his day. And so start your day with prayer. Set definite times to pray. In Daniel 6 and verse 10, Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Like David, like Daniel, they had a habit of praying three times a day. And Daniel's enemies knew where to find him 
because he prayed at the same time every day. And so they knew three times a day exactly when to find him. And they knew exactly where, which leads me to the second point. Have a definite place to pray. Again, in Daniel 6.10, Daniel's habit was to pray in his chamber and upon his knees. And so have a definite place to pray. In Luke 22, it says Jesus came out and went as he was wont. In other words, that was his habit. To the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that you enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed. And so Jesus went as he was wont to the Mount of Olives. In other words, Jesus had a definite place to pray. As much as he traveled around, as much as he was on the move, he still had a definite place to pray. And verse 41 ends by telling us that Jesus kneeled down and prayed. So both Daniel and the Lord, as well as others in the scripture, had a definite posture for prayer. And that's not going to be my next point, but it is something maybe to consider. But have a definite time to pray. Have a determined place to pray. And three, pray in a quiet place. In Matthew 14, 23, it says, When the Lord had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. And so Matthew 14, 23 says that the Lord went apart to pray. That he was there alone. In other words, when it was time for Jesus to fellowship with the Father, he left the multitudes. He even left the apostles. And he went to a quiet and secluded place. Luke twenty two forty one 41 says he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast. In other words, again, when it was time for Jesus to fellowship with the Father, he left the multitudes. He even left the apostles. And he went to a quiet and secluded place. And so set a definite time to pray. Have a determined place to pray. Pray in a quiet place. And then fourthly, have a list. Just write out the things you want to pray for, because if you don't, you'll forget. I had a dear friend and mentor of mine for decades, was Dr. Lee Robertson. And I met Dr. Robertson when I was 16 years old, and he told me that he was going to pray for me. And a number of years later, I was in his office in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and he said something about praying for me every day. And I said, Dr. Robertson, I said, do you, do you really do that? He said, of course I do. I said, no, really. I mean, I said, I'm, I'm not being mean, Dr. Robertson. I won't be offended, but I mean, I know I, I, I tell people all the time I'll pray for him. And sometimes I do and sometimes I don't, you know, sometimes as a pastor, somebody say, you know, would you pray for me? And I'll just stop and pray for him right there because if I don't, I'll forget and then I'll never pray for him when I said I did and then I'd be a liar. And, and so, you know, somebody asked me one time years ago, I said, Pastor, why is it when I ask you to pray for something, you stop, you, you literally pray for it right then? I said, because I know that's the only time I'll remember to do it. And I don't want to be a liar and say, I'll pray for you and not do it. So, but I, but I said, you know, Dr. Robertson, I won't be offended if, if, you know, if, if you don't really pray for me every day. He said, no, I do. I do. And he opens up his desk drawer and he pulls out a spiral notebook and he starts flip, 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 like lot. And each line in the notebook from page to page to page to page to page to page had a number by it. And he flip, 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 flip. And he's like, there you are right there. You're the 1300th and whatever thing I pray for every day. I try when I pray not to make it a laundry list or a grocery list. You know that you just rattle it off and okay, I prayed today. But sometimes that's what it is. I'm not just, you know. but, but have a list because if you don't, you'll forget things. Set a definite time to pray. Have a determined place to pray. Pray in a quiet place and have a list. If you'll do those four things, I think your prayer life will be helped a lot. And so, Father, I thank you that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I thank you that we can come boldly before the throne of grace, that you hear us, that you take notice of the things that we need and the things of which we ask, and just pray that we would put forth the effort on our end to make a concerted effort, yes. that we would set aside a time to pray, a place to pray, that we'd make a list so that we'd remember the things for which we wish to pray. And not only that, but we can... We can keep track of the answers to prayer as well. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.